Hello. Suppose you were in perfect health in every respect. And yet, if someone were to tell you that you had exactly one year to live, what would you do? Would you treat it lightly? Hmm? Well, perhaps you should consider what happened to a certain Mr. Henry Crawford, who was told just that, and he tried to laugh it off. Lights out! For release. Today. News? What news? Which news? Someday I'm going to find the smart joker who dreamed up this idea of sending daily news releases to the papers. And I might throttle him. Yes, I might. On the other hand, I might take an entirely different tack. Be divinely sweet, buy him several martinis, and probe the secret of his success. <sighs> Let's face it, girl. There is no news today. Absolutely none. Pigeons have to fend for themselves today, Magpie. I'm busy. Hmm? Low-cost housing project, East Haven. Mm. Sunken living rooms, stall showers. How about that? What's the matter? Beasts from the producers, gripes from the actors? Oh, no news. Well, no news is good news. Easy, easy, honey. It's just a gag. I'll come right over and take you out to lunch. You, not the pigeons. The show's in trouble, Pete. Well, hasn't even opened yet. We're going to need all the press breaks we can get. Play that bad? It's not the play, it's Crawford. Why, he's great. I saw him in that mystery. What was it? Uh, caged. He was fine. That was over a year ago. Something's happened to him since then. What do you mean? I don't know. Something strange, something terrible. It gives me the shivers just to watch him. Every time I go to rehearsals and see that face, I, I feel suddenly cold as ice. I feel it now just thinking about him. Comes a time in every man's life when he must face reality head on. There's no turning back. No escape, no haven whatsoever. Only the facts, and they're implacable. Yet the fact that I love you seems to disturb you more than it does me. Oh, don't turn away from me, my darling. I do love you. You must believe that. If I've been irritable and moody, it has nothing whatever to do with you. My feeling for you has never changed. I love you more than ever. But with this difference, and that is the reason that I must go away. Alva, what's the matter with him? He's underplayed. You know Crawford. He won't give an ounce of energy until the opening. But tomorrow's dress rehearsal with all those backers. The man's a money player, Maggie. You know Crawford. He'll come through the performance. I'm not worried. Of course, we can't overlook what has happened or pretend that it hasn't happened. The people here, your neighbors, your father, all know who I am. When did you first notice something strange? Oh, the first week of rehearsal, I suppose. That time, I thought he was struggling for lines. That's no excuse now. He's let it perfect. He knows that part backwards and forwards. Then what's he doing up there? I haven't the slightest idea. All I know is he's drawing Laura Holloway out of her mind. She says it's like playing opposite the dead man. He even looks dead. It's true. Hi. 
Henry is dead. This is Mrs. Crawford, Maggie. This is Maggie Fisher. Press agent. How do you do? How do you do? Is your husband ill, Mrs. Crawford? Is that the... No, you were right the first time. Mrs. Crawford, do you mean to say... Yes. Henry's death. Or what amounts to the same thing. I don't understand. Nobody does. That's the trouble. Will you come and have a drink with me? Thank you. Now look, be my good little magpie. Sit still, don't wink at any strange men. And by five o'clock exactly, I'll buy you a lovely martini. Okay, take it easy, hon. I'm on my way. I don't know why I'm telling you this. I, I can't keep it locked up inside me. I have to tell someone. Surely you've consulted his doctor about this. Yes, we did once. But now Henry refuses to trust doctors. Or anyone. Perhaps it's a matter for the police. No, no, I think not. Well, you can't just sit by and watch this happen. You don't understand. It has happened. We're just witnessing the finish, that's all. But if you love him... I loved him. When he was alive. The man's still alive. No. Mrs. Crawford, I don't want to be rude, but I don't get it. I just don't get it at all. So perhaps if I explain something. You see, before I met Henry, I was engaged to another man. This other man was an actor of sorts. We used to go to the theater quite a bit. One night, I saw Henry on the stage for the first time. I was so thrilled by his performance, I insisted that Joseph take me backstage to meet him. I... I'll never forget that first meeting. <coughs> Who is it? Joseph Balsamo. Who? Oh? Balsamo. I met you at the last equity meeting. Come in. Do I disturb you? No, not at all. Come in, come in. My name is Balsamo. I also am in the profession. Oh, oh fellow sufferer. <laughs> well, are you working or are you at liberty? I am never at liberty. There is always a public for my art. <laughs> well, I wish I could say the same. It is actually on behalf of my fiance that I am here. Oh? She saw you tonight for the first time and would like to meet you. If it is not too much trouble. No, no, not at all. Elaine? This is my fiance, Miss Lawrence. How do you do, Miss Lawrence? How do you do, Mr. Crawford? I, I asked Joseph to take me backstage to meet you because I... Oh, now that I'm here, I don't know what to say at all. <laughs> And did you enjoy the performance? Oh, so much, so much. Good, then you must come back and see it again. Oh, thank you, I will. And if you do, you must come back and visit me again. May I? Of course. You understand? Miss Lawrence is my fiance. <laughs> oh, lucky man. Not only never at liberty, but has managed to snag himself a very charming fiance. Oh. I have explained. I am never at liberty because my art is universal. I'm not an ordinary actor. Like me? No. Certainly not like you. <laughs> My name. It reminds you of something, perhaps? I, uh, I don't believe I caught it. Balsamo. Joseph Balsamo. I should do well in lights. I am a descendant of that other Balsamo. You know him, perhaps, by his other name, Cagliostro? Oh, yes, the, uh, the 18th century charlatan. Charlatan? Joseph. He had tremendous power over other humans. That was his great talent. And you? I carry on for my ancestor. How nice for you. Now, no doubt you don't want to waste time with lesser actors, and since I have some people waiting for me at Sardis, perhaps you'll excuse me. Certainly. Come, Elaine. Please forgive us for detaining you. My pleasure. And do come back and visit me again. Thank you. I, I will. Elaine! Come 
Was he really Cagliostro's descendant? That's what he always said. And I have reason to believe it was true. What did he do? Travel with a medicine show? No, no. He got bookings mostly out of town. I, I, I used to help him, but that was before I began to spend so much time with Henry. So you did go back? Oh, yes. The very next day, three or four times a week. As often as I possibly could. Had it bad, didn't you? Yes. <laughs> Joseph went out of town, stayed away for several months. <laughs> I saw Henry almost every day until one night. Darling, darling, you will marry me. Oh, Henry, I... I... <laughs> I'll take that reading again. Please, please, darling, please marry me. <laughs> of course. Oh, Hello, Balsamo. When did you get back? Take your hands off her. I don't think Elaine would like that. Would you, darling? Henry, please. Joseph, please, you must try to understand. I understand you're my fiancé. A wrong tense, old man. Miss Lawrence was your fiancé. How dare you? Let's not overplay this, Balsamo. You've stolen her from me. Pull off, Balsamo. You'll lose your equity card. Why, you... Joseph! Stop being an idiot. Elaine and I are in love, and we're going to be married, and I think you should be a bit civil about it and wish us well. I do not wish you well. Well, we'll survive. She will, but you won't. If you marry her, you're finished. Do you understand? Finished. Oh, go away, boy. You bother me. Henry, please. Joseph, please try and understand. We couldn't help it. We fell in love. I'm not we... speaking to you. I'm speaking to him. And I say to him that if he marries you, he's through. Within one year. That is exactly what I give him. One year. Was that the last time you saw Balsamo? Yes. Then Henry and I were married. And? Then Henry's health began to fail. I didn't know why. I, I was terribly worried. And finally I prevailed on him to see a doctor. Hmm. Hmm. Kill there doesn't seem to be an organic disturbance of any kind. Oh, but, Doctor, I... I feel so strange. No pepper. Or vitality. I... I'm supposed to start rehearsals of a new play next month. I feel weak as water. Can't you do something, Doctor? Perhaps it's emotional. Some psychic disturbance. Are you disturbed? Are you unhappy? Disturbed about anything in particular? Oh, uh, I'm married to the most wonderful girl in the world. I, I have a fine part in the new play, and altogether I've never had so many reasons to be so happy in my life. It's just this, this wretched weakness, this odd kind of apathy that seems to rob me of all my, my strength and vigor. I, I feel my strength slowly ebbing away. Doctor, you've got to help. I'll try, Henry. I'll try. But he couldn't do anything. Nobody could. We tried other doctors, psychiatrists, specialists. Henry's health grew steadily worse. He's died. Oh, no. You said so yourself this afternoon at the theater. What I meant was his performance. It, it's so mechanical. It's dead. We all know why. I don't. You've heard this story. Balsamo? Oh, now, surely Mrs. Crawford and intelligent... facts. Facts? You simply choose not to face them. What, that this... this Bengali invoked some wild witch's A curse on... A man has been stricken. Flanagan's rude, Mrs. Crawford. Pay no attention to him. It seems to me you've given up too soon. What can we do? Have you ever tried to see Balsamo? Yes. Well? One afternoon, in desperation, I finally went to his apartment. The door was locked. I, I waited an hour, but nobody answered. Yet I heard strange sounds inside. I got scared and ran away. But don't you see how important it is? Somebody's got to get to Balsamo. It's too late. It's not too late. What's his address? Now, Maggie, look, I'm... Flanagan. Pay the bill, call a taxi, and pull on your long winter underwear. I'm not going Go to... Go on. 
We're going to call on Junior, the sorcerer's apprentice. And I don't want to be late for any of that lovely witch's brew he's got on today's blue plate special. You were saying, Mrs. Crawford? What do you smell? Fried galoshes. <laughs> How would you like to break down the door? I wouldn't. Well, then I will. Oh, no. Oh. Well? Uh, you wish something? Um, <clears throat> we were just conducting a survey. Were you by any chance watching your television set? I was not. Oh, well, that's all we wanted to know. Come on, Mother. Um, you are Joseph Balsamo? Yes. We'd like to talk to you. Go on. May we come in? No. I'm at work. Um, cooking something? What is it you want? We want to ask you some questions. What right have you to ask questions? Well... I've done nothing wrong. You have killed Henry Crawford. He is dead? Yes. <laughs> dead. Finally dead. Come in, come in. And you'll see how Joseph Balsamo did it. A trade secret, you understand, but now there's no further need to hide the secret. Let the world know. Enter. Look about you. Fill your eyes with the greatest feat of black magic since the days of my ancestor, the great Balsamo. He they call Cagliostro. Henry Crawford. Henry Crawford in all the roles he has ever played. His entire career. Here. In this room. <laughs> Look at him. See how he's died. In every way known to man and the devil. I had planned for him to die the day of the opening of his new play. But we cannot be too precise in this business. As it is, I have not done badly. Two days margin. <laughs> You're a murderer. No. I'm a dispenser of justice. Henry Crawford stole from me my woman. I steal from him his life. A fair bargain, you think not? I think not. Easy, Maggie. Don't make trouble for me. I intend to make plenty of trouble for you. Keep him covered, Flanagan. Huh? The gun. Oh, sure. Are you going to move under your own power, or do we have to push? My work is done. There is nothing more for me to accomplish. Henry Crawford is dead, and I have killed him. Move. No one takes me. No one has ever trapped a balsamo. Never! There's a time in every man's life when he must face realities head on. There's no turning back. There's no escape. There's no haven whatever. Only the facts, and they are implacable. Yet the fact that I love you, this... What's the matter, Henry? Henry, are you ill? Oh, I... I feel wonderful. What? Alive. Strong. For the first time in a year. Oh, my darling. I'm going to give the performance of my life in this play. <laughs> Great. Thanks. Dave, we'll take it from that second scene. Got an angle. You're kidding. I need an item, a lead, a story. 
Why, you little hammerhead, you stumbled into the wildest stop press yarn in years, right on a silver platter. Can't use it. What? Let it lay on page 35 in the obits where it belongs. Think of all the space you can crack. And be out job hunting tomorrow? No, thanks. In basic English, honey bun, that balsamo affair is just about the most gruesome little something since the Spanish Inquisition. Why, if audiences ever knew the real inside, they'd, they'd be scared blue every time Henry Crawford came out to take a bow. You're going to let it die? <laughs> Public relations, sweetie. That's what I'm paid for. Read it and weep. So? Press agents keep stories out of the papers, do they? Only the big ones, darling. Got an angle. No. <laughs> well, I have. For release today. The Notre Dame backfield, selected Laura Holloway, star of the distant corner, as the girl they'd most like to be shipwrecked with on a desert island. Oh, you. Ah, uh, you know, they're wrong. Whether you believe in black magic or not, it's a good idea to have a girl like Maggie Foster around, just in case. <laughs> 